Hello, and welcome to the Darby Creek Diaries. I'm Gail Thompson, and I'm going to do something a little out of the ordinary. Uh, we're going to make a crane. I fell into this because my friend Nanette, that I show dogs with, she was in charge of decorations at the National Specialty, and she handed me bags and bags of cranes to string. So she goes, oh, you can just get on YouTube and figure it out. And that kind of started me playing with origami. Here's a picture of us. Uh, both of these dogs were in the top 20 in the country, so we're super proud of them. That's all Nanette's breeding. I'm just the, the caretaker. We start off with a six by six sheet of origami paper. It's a little thinner than cardstock. I wanted to do two colors so that way you could easily see how I was folding. I'm going to wind up with an orange crane when this is done. So I had the orange side at the top and I'm just going to make these folds from corner to corner. I'm probably not going to talk all the way through this because you can watch and this you can replay several times and you can do it in slow motion if you want, but it's easier to watch than it is for me to explain. I hope you're doing well. I've been a while, I'm sorry. I'm having some technical difficulties, but I'm back and really thrilled to show you something a little different. Now I know nothing really about origami other than how to make a crane, so you know, if you have questions on that, you're going to want to look up some origami channels. But I'm just slowing this down so you can see exactly where those folds are in that particular spot. But if you're not interested in the origami, then I will uh, figure out what the time thing is and I will uh, put that in a block here and... Uh, you can skip on to that. Now we're just making folds that do go clear to that center crease. It's important that that crease does go clear to the center because it, it really it makes a lot to do with the shape of the crane. Now we'll be doing other creases where we don't want to go quite to the center line, but on this one we do. Now you're going to open the whole thing up and this is where we start to make the bird base. You're going to want to put that top flap down as far as it'll go and stay lined up. And sometimes a bone folder is a good thing to have. And this is kind of tricky and it took me a while to get this. Kind of like opening up a little birdie mouth is the only way I can describe it. But you have to be careful, if, especially if you're using origami paper, because it is really, really thin. Now, you probably could use just our 6x6 six six, you know, pattern paper, but it's going to be a little thicker, so it'll be a little harder to fold, but I can't imagine much. I haven't had time to try it. But <clears throat> just play this over, and you can even hit slow motion if you need to. I had to, when I was learning, I had to play the video over and over again and eventually you get the hang of it and that makes sense and you want to make sure you have the little two flaps at the bottom that's why I wiggled it there now this is the fold where you don't want to go clear to the center because it'll make it a lot easier to fold later to not have that big old traffic jam there so you don't want to go quite to the center on this one and mostly you just keep flipping it over and you do the same thing. It's a very symmetrical little bird, so that helps a lot. It was snowing yesterday and it was sunny and it was raining and it was dark and then it was sunny again. It was the oddest weather here in Ohio. So I had time to do this video because it was just too weird to go outside. Now, we're going to flip over the page and have, we have two um, layers of paper on either side. Now we're going to fold this up. These are going to wind up being 
the wings here in a minute. And then the kind of uh, funny part comes up. There are going to be two little, oh, I got to flip this over, sorry. Now we flatten it back out. So now you've got three on one side and one fold on the other. So you flip it over and then you flatten back. So you're back to two. Now I'm going to show you the two little flaps. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. This is going to be the crane's head. And you're going to want it. I don't have any nails. Uh, you're going to want to kind of fold that over and then pinch it into itself. And that becomes its head. And then you can fold the tail out to whatever you know distance you want. And then all you have to do is pull the wings down. And then you have a crane. And I'm telling you, I strung hundreds of these things for the dog show. So it was, and that little hole in the bottom is very important, and I'll show you that later. Now we're going to make the card base. This is a five by seven card, but I have to make it out of eight and a half by 11 paper. So I'm doing, you know, one side of it is five by seven, and the other is, this one is, five by seven and a half, because I'm going to make a little flap here. And I just, I have a little dent in my dip in my table, so it's kind of hard for me to, to um, do that kind of cutter there. Now I'm just, just taking uh, the bone folder and doing a half inch. So now I've got the half inch side down from the top, and then the five by seven on the back. I also made a second five by seven sheet because I need to have something to put my spinner in. So I'm going to lay the oval on the front of the card and I'm mostly eyeballing it. I'm doing it a little closer to the top than to the bottom. Uh, I don't know, I think it kind of makes it a little stronger. Plus I was thinking I'd have more room to put a sentiment or something. Winds up I don't put a sentiment on this card right away but I'm going to save that for later. So I do kind of take an eyeball at it and it's kind of close. It's probably not exact, but I'm hoping to cut the top layer and dent the second. I tried it with my Brutus Monroe, not your mama's cardstock, and boy, it didn't want to cut through anything. It's super thick. So I did back off a little bit, but, and I'm just using um, uh, hammer mill probably. And I decided I wanted to make sure that it didn't shift. But I got lucky and it cut through both layers. So now I know they are in the exact right position. So that will be the front of the card. And then the back of the card, of course, is solid. So now I have my three pieces for the card base. I Off screen, I went ahead and uh, die cut the Hero Arts Cherry Blossom die. And I found some shiny pink cardstock, which I think came out of a Hero Arts kit years ago. Um, I can't seem to find any. I imagine that there is, you know, somebody that carries it. And I, anyhow, I die cut the flowers and I'm just putting them back on the branches exactly how they were intended to be. And except for I did make this, I I just, I'm going through and I'm going, oh, well, that one's too big. And then I decided I wanted them to have a little bit of dimension. So I got out my shaping kit, my Sizzix shaping kit, and I just gave them all a little bit of dimension. And just to make them a little more cupped. Super simple. You're supposed to kind of mist the back with water, but I didn't. This cardstock wasn't all that thick anyway. And I just ran the smallest ball I could. You don't want to make dents in them, so, you know, but you, you want to get it to curl. So you do need somewhat of a ball. Anyway, I also die cut the branches out in the pink. Those uh, other flowers were, they had extra dyes just for those three sizes of flowers, but they didn't have anything for the buds. So I cut out another branch and cut all the buds off. 
just for you. And now the cherry blossoms aren't a uh, multi, I don't know how to say this. It's a single flower instead of a double or, you know, a cluster flower. So it's a single flower. So I put all these um, dimensional flowers on top, the petals right on top of the others. I, I didn't shift them off to the side. Later on, I, we put a little decoration in it, but it's time to string the crane. So you take clear thread, which is not real easy for you to see, and I should have used another color. And there's a hole in the bottom, right in the center of the crane, and you run your needle up through to the point, or nearly the point, close enough, and leaving a lot of tail because we're going to need it for the bottom. And then you run a stitch through the side and you're going to loop your thread through the over the needle and pull it up. And that keeps it so it'll stay in the same place. Believe me, I did this hundreds of times. And now we have our crane strung. Now let's get the rest of this card put together. I have my three pieces and I also off screen went ahead and cut a little decoration for around the, the oval. I didn't want to stack up too many layers because as you see in a little bit, there's going to be um, quite a bit more going on. And this die has little kind of little slits in it. So I wanted to kind of smooth it out so we didn't have anything oozing through, but super easy to put in. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the card base going. Um, you know, they say more is more. So I'm going to double up. I'm going to use score tape, which is on its own, extremely strong, but I'm also going to add a little bit of glue to our half inch flap that we made earlier. And I actually get the release paper off rather quickly for me. So here's my little bit of glue, and then all you have to do is stand them up and uh, the front and the back, and we'll line it up, and then we lay it down, and then we fold the, the flap over. But, you know, I, standing it up is important too. So now I've just laid the crane in there. It's not attached. I'll show you how to do that, but I wanted to put my... Uh, cherry blossom branch on because I, I don't know why I felt like I needed to do this before we finished the card. Not sure why I felt that way, but I did. So I took one of the, uh, the interior ovals and ran it through my die cutter with a Simon Says Stamp Lumens folder to give a little texture. I felt that there just needed to be something there. And I'm putting some tumbled glass distressed oxide on lightly. I'm making it darker around the edges and trying not to get a blop anywhere. But that's what it looks like. It's pretty subtle. Then I use some shimmering bliss, but I, um, I'll find you something else uh, for the supplies because I can't find it. But it's just a little bit of sparkly stuff. And it's super easy to put this oval in. You just glue it with uh, way too much glue. I'm not sure why I thought I needed this. But then you plop it right in the center of the oval for perfect placement. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with it so far. Now we're going to get the crane in place. Now, I'm using this clear plastic thread, so it is hard to see. I'm cutting it off of the needle there. And it's a slippery little bugger, so I glue and tape this as well. And you, you're going to want to monitor it because, you know, it'll slip and slide during installation there. And I'm just checking out because I want it to be, you know, kind of centered. I don't want the tail whacking on stuff because it's supposed to be a spinner card. So... We need it to spin. So I, I work on the placement of this a little bit until I get it to where I want it. 
and then I'm just going to uh, attach the bottom thread with another piece of tape and then I'm going to double check before I do that make sure my tension's good and then I'm going to clip off the excess and then I'm going to get out the glue and just reinforce that before I put on my backer piece which is the next step once I put a ridiculous amount of glue on this. I'm not sure why I'm, I use so much glue. I really don't need to. But you just place that inside and then it, everything is all covered and pretty and looks great. And there is the crane card, but I was looking at it and thinking, well, it still needs something else. So I decided to do some more cherry blossoms and there I'm showing you that it's spinning and I hope that you enjoyed this, that it made sense, that you'll come back and see me. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, follow me on all the social media. I'm going to leave some other videos here for you to watch until next time. Have a great week. Bye-bye.